All right, I haven't done much about the garage in a while, just cause I've not, just really not had time. But I started doing my sheetrock and my mud, and mud sucks, so I only got to about right here and stopped cause I need to get some tape in here to cover up some of those big cracks. But anyway, need to finish mudding down this wall and then up here, so I got a lot to do. But for now, I actually did some of this fake brick on this wall, and it was kind of a yellow color, like that little patch there I had to do over my, my little IT board there, if you will, where my cameras and all my internet and everything is, my Wi-Fi. So I then I uh, got some really bright white, pure white paint, and I painted over it, so now it looks uh, a lot brighter. And I did my little transition, so if you notice, this is how it looked before, it's all dark gray. This is how it looks now, it's all nice and white. I went ahead and painted up the ceiling to see how this yellow insulation was gonna take the paint. It actually took pretty good, but I don't want it white, I want it black to kind of give it a effect of a higher ceiling and blend it in. So now I've got some black paint, I'm ready to start spraying. Just want to show you what it looks like. I'm gonna eventually paint this wall all white. I started painting the doors to hide all the silver tracks. This one I have it painted, see how it's silver. Uh, this one I have, see how it's white. Just kind of blends in more. Did that fake brick between them. So this will be all white, all the way around, with the black ceilings. I think it'll give it some depth, and the white will help reflect some of the light in here, but the black gives it a much higher looking ceiling. And because you don't see the cars out of here that often, but lined up, I'll give you a little preview of it like outside. So there they are, red, blue, green, and black. <laughs> so stay tuned, it won't look like this much longer. Man, that's just the first pull. That looks so good. I can't wait to get the whole ceiling like that. That's awesome. Exactly what I'm looking for. And here's the finished product. Let me go ahead and mute that real quick. So, it's uh, December 30th, 2022. Haven't done an update in a few weeks. Just been busy here in the garage. Um, I'll probably insert some stuff in here, but um, as you can tell, my garage now has a black ceiling and white walls. I even arranged some flags up in here. Previously, I had hung them from the ceiling, but it affected my light and added some shadows, which I didn't want. So I just put them up here on the wall and, you know, uh, add a little pattern here to it. And then on this side, America. So anyway, um, paint the walls white, seal them black. And no, I am not a tape mud guy, so uh, it ain't perfect. But you know what? It works great for what I'm doing. So this gives you an idea of what it looks like in here now. And I'm just doing some final cleanup and organization. I gotta get like a, a rack so I can put all my stuff on it and make it look more organized instead of having crap on the floor. I don't want stuff stacked up here, so I'm gonna take that down. But just to give you a recap, um, all the cars are in here now. I'm doing some cleanup on the TT Celine. I did a remote tune with Andrew Baroden. Uh, he is Project Gotta Go on YouTube, Instagram, and all that. This car runs great, and I'll insert a picture here of the last outing at like 17, 18 pounds of boost, and I'll show you the correction. The correction is like less than 2%, which is what you want. This thing is tuned in great. It's running like a champ. It actually spools really good on the street. It runs great. I mean, it's just an absolute animal. This 
this is the fresh motor. It's got more compression in it than I had previously. So at roughly 19 pounds of boost on the old motor uh, with a stick, this car would make over 925 horsepower. So I'm expecting with more compression and about a pound or two less boost, it's making about the same horsepower. So I'm estimating right now at 17 pounds of boost, it's making about 900 horsepower, give or take a little bit. So maybe more, maybe a little less but roughly it will knock the tires off pretty much at will. Anything over a big toe on it and it is just undrivable. I mean, it, it's crazy how fast this car is. I can turn it down about 13, 14 pounds of boost and it pretty much tries to dead hook and, and go. It's ridiculous how a couple pounds of boost to make this car just a complete animal. What I'm doing now is I got my buffer out and I'm just doing some correction on it. Uh, just over the last year, just doing maintenance on it and you know doing work sliding in and out of it and doing maintenance washes so to speak you'll put little scratches in it so what i'm doing i just did a 3500 compound with a green pad and what that does is it actually gets out the small you know swirl marks and very light scratching that can get in here so just want to show you i take one rag I wipe off the high side residue like this. And then I switch to a much nicer towel. Do my finish like that. That goes ahead and gets all the rest of the compound off. It gives you a much uh, cleaner area to work with. So if you look at that, not too shabby. Again, most of the paint on this car is original. Um, I've had it touched up a few times over the years, but majority of the paint on the car is original. And for black, that's saying a lot, as most of you know, with a black car, they do show every flaw, every defect, but when they are clean, I'll go out and argue with you, there's not a prettier color on a car than a black vehicle, whether it's a truck car or whatever, but it's hard to argue with like the black and chrome or, you know, if you like black and polish, whatever, but um, I do like the black paint on this car. It just makes it sinister looking. It's fast. I mean, you know, it's just, it checks all the right boxes, if you will. Um, that I've got the computer dialed in. I spent yesterday getting the air conditioning working. That's one thing I didn't have working on it before. I found out my CCRM, the constant control relay module, was not sending out voltage to the compressor. So instead of dicking around with that some more, I decided to go ahead and hook up two relays uh, one relay, it's basically going to CCRM. So instead of the CCRM handling it, the feed wire going in is triggering a relay. That relay sends 12 volts to the compressor and actually turns it on. And then another relay, when it's triggering that, that one, it triggers the other relay, which connects a ground connection. And that's tapped into the second fan from the Holly. So whenever I turn on the AC, it turns on the second fan, which pulls air through the condenser, which is what you have to have when you run the AC. So right now it works just like it would if it was factory. You turn on the air conditioning, the uh, compressor engages, the second fan turns on to keep everything cool, and it runs great. Um, I drove around yesterday, not only is the car just an animal, you turn on the air conditioning, it blows cold like it's supposed to. So this is a legit 1,000 plus horsepower on ethanol now, full-time E85 is what's in the tank, stick shift, uh, air conditioning, power steering, it's got every creature comfort that you want. And it's one of the original cars that was making 1,000 horsepower before it was famous for everybody to make it now. Nowadays you can buy a Coyote and put a big whipple on it and make 1,000 horsepower. But if you think back to 2008, 2009, when I built this car, nobody was doing 1,000. I mean, you just couldn't have a street car and make 1,000 horsepower. It was ridiculous. And now everybody does it. It's actually easy to do these days, which is hilarious how far technology has come. But this new Holly computer makes the tuning so much easier. This car, I guess with the way we've got the timing and all in it now in the E85, it does spool noticeably better. 
Um, I still run a 327 gear in the back. That's what I had in it when I had the 6R80. Um, I should probably go to at least a 355 or maybe a 373 with this T56 Magnum. Um, because when I take off from a stop, it has a very long first gear in it. Um, so a 355 would definitely make a noticeable improvement and still be tall enough that when it starts making boost, I mean, it's still gonna kick the tires, don't get me wrong, but I feel like a 355 would be a better all around uh, driving gear in the car. And then when I do go to a turbo 400 uh, later, that 355 will be a great all around gear. I don't know if 373 would be a better match, but eventually I'm gonna change the gears. If you heard by the video, uh, the ring gear is definitely noisy in this car. I think I've just beat on it so much with the power and the weight of the car. I need to change the ring and pinion out. But it is 327, I need to change that out. But right now today, it's just getting it all cleaned up. And I wanna show you a new product I've got. So I picked this up from Majestic Solutions. This is called Shock It. It's their new uh, ceramic speed finish is what they call it, but basically just a final detailer. But they say they recommend this over the pink stuff I was using for years, which looked like this. This is what I use for, for years and years on uh, like a final uh, spray on. And for those that asked, I also used uh, Reload. Reload works pretty good too. Um, so between those two, either one's fine. Whatever you can get. You can normally get this online easier than you can get Majestic. Majestic's lo local to me, so I can drive over there and pick this up. But I did try this yesterday for the first time on the front of the car. And let me tell you, it works really well. Not only does it give a really deep shine on the car, but it's really slick as well. So just give you a look there, what it looks like. I like it. So I'm getting ready to finish correcting the rest of the car. I'm gonna spray that on there and then I'm gonna actually cover it up. Filled up for 85, I've got an extra jug and covered up and this thing's gonna be hibernating for a little bit. This is the Mach 1 and the Mach 1, pretty much same thing and the hibernation for now. And then the charger. The charger is on E85 as well. got it filled up and then the wife's Pontiac gets on E85. So now all the cars in here run E85 all the time. So part of uh, sitting them up for the winter time and parking them, you wanna make sure the tank is full so you don't get any moisture in the tank. So I'm gonna do that, make sure they're all full and then clean them up and then cover them up and they'll be good to go for a few months till the weather's better, we can take them out. Uh, for example, Today, the weather's gonna be in the 60 degrees. So between yesterday, it was in the 60s, and today, uh, I've actually taken the cars out, drove them around a little bit, uh, just because it's been in the teens at night and in the 20s, it's been really cold. So anyway, for the end of the year, wanna throw a video together, show you the garage, the progress. I got it back to where I wanted it. I've always wanted to finish it and have it two-toned like this with the black ceiling to make it taller in here. And to show you, I got the cars all running. End of the year, it took me a while. But now the cars are back running again. The black car has not been on the dyno yet, but just going by what it made before and how it ran, I'm pretty confident this thing's making 900 uh, on the lower boost, 17 to 18 pounds of boost. And I've turned it up. There's no reason it shouldn't make over 12, 1300 on high boost. Eventually I'll get to a dyno and verify the numbers. But for now, just driving it around, it's absolutely phenomenal. It's just one of the baddest street cars you're ever gonna see and you just hop in and go. I mean, it, it's crazy. So I'm really happy with the way it turned out with the Holly and Andrew's tuning on it. I mean, it fires right up. Even when it's super cold outside, it fires right up on the 85, runs great, um, shifts good with the six speed manual. So I'm really happy with this car the way it is now. Is it ready to go to the track? No, it's not really set up to be a race car right now with the six speed manual. I could probably go race it, but it's never gonna run the best time it could without an automatic in it. So for now, it is a legit hop in and go street car, wherever you want to go. Just don't get caught in the rain with the pro drag radios on the back. So if any questions, let me know. Uh, this will probably be the last video I do for the 2022 year. Want to give you an idea. This is what I'm working on for the year. The charger's up and running good for 2023. 
I'm gonna pull the rear end apart. I'm gonna put a positive traction unit in it, true track type of thing, and a different set of gears, get rid of the 276 gears that's in it, and go to a 370 or 373 gear. And that's gonna fix that car. So it'll spin both tires now, and it needs more gear. The 276 is just way too low. But instead of 373s, that thing is gonna come alive. And that car's pretty much done. Um, maybe do something different with the seats in it. Um, some more foam in the seats because they're kind of collapsed. But that car is legit. The Mach 1 is pretty much ready to go. And then the Pontiac, it's nothing wrong with it. It's fixed. I did some working on it this, this year. So right now, everything's pretty much up to speed. Um, the only thing left in the garage here, I would like to get the floors done. As you can tell, it's still just regular concrete. And I would like to get those scraped and some kind of coating put on it. And again, get some racks to organize my stuff in here a little better. But for now, uh, you can see I got my neons. I got my video system working with my different monitor over here. So you can see all the different angles I've got with the four cameras I got right now. I can expand that to eight. But for now, with the four, it gives me a good view of everything going on and the bigger screen because I'm old. And it helps me see a little better out here. But overall, I'm real happy. I'm real happy the way it turned out in here. See any questions, let me know. Any comments, throw them out there and we'll talk to you soon.